All right, do you see everything? Yes. <clears throat> okay, so I worked on this mostly this the week this weekend. So I don't know if I understand all of it completely. And there is a lot of it that I didn't quite understand when I was researching it. So this is about um, text to image AI. So this is about uh, programs where you tell it what to write and it will give you an image. So the three most common programs are DAL-E, Stable Diffusion, and Mid-Journey. Um, based of DAL-E is uh, one created by OpenAI. Um, it's, I think it's the biggest one out the moment. Um, it's also used by Shutterstock. Uh, Shutterstock actually sent a deal where they will use it to generate some of their images. Um, I, I, actually used, I actually used the Stable Diffusion where, where yeah. one of my projects um, in physics. It's kind of cool. What did you use it for? Um, I took a course called, called Physics 20A or 20B or something, and then it's a, and I used it to ge generate, like they asked us to produce some sort of creative design. I produced like uh, images of um, the, the galaxy with, um, it's more symbolic because I'm trying, I wrote like a story, little story about, um, you know how they're building telescopes but at Hawaii, but it's destroying people's like, um, destroying people's life. Oh no, destroying people's like religion and stuff because apparently they buried all of their ancestors there. So I kind of wrote, I kind, of, I kind of drew like, um, a telescope on top of grave, like graveyard. Oh, it's kind of symbolic. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, but I feel like definitely useful for creating symbolic and actually actually pretty images like yeah um I'm trying to think what else i was going to say that's related to that because i know that i'm writing like a science fiction story so i was almost a little interested in this too because i can be able to use it to illustrate it um mm -hmm. but yeah we'll see what happens i, I know they're getting better really quickly like just in yeah. a few years yeah. like it's really gotten better mm -hmm. um any of them are just any of them free Right. Uh, I think Stable I think Diffusion is free. Dalt E, you can use it free, but uh, if you want really high resolution images, you have to pay like a small amount. Uh, so yeah, so Stable Diffusion um, is created by Stability AI and a few other companies. I think they're mostly based in England. Um, and it's used also, instead of, uh, I think DLE can do this too, but you can also use it for text to, or image to image translation, where you can give it instructions and it will transform an image another image maybe you can make a drawing into a live action scene or something um also what's cool about it is that you, i think you, you probably mentioned this earlier you can download it online and then run it on your computer without actually having to be connected with the big servers of the company that run it and then uh, another one called mid journey was created by a, a guy called david holtz uh you only, can only get it through discord funny you tell about what you want to make an image of and it'll do it um so I'm going to talk about Doll E2. This is only, really the only one I, I researched um, so far. It basically, what it does is you give it instructions. It will turn a text prompt into a word vector, which is something we, we studied earlier with uh, with attention is all you need um, and how transformers work. And then, so you train it with images with captions. So the captions are encoded using a word vector, and then the images are encoded into like an image latent space called uh, image encoding, I think. Yeah, and then um, it basically uses something called a prior to learn the associations between the captions and the images. And then what that does later is um, it uses a process called noise diffusion where it takes white noise and then it takes the aspects of the text prompt and then uses the prior to translate that into to, uh, image meaning. And it will gradually introduce order into the random noise until it creates a high resolution image. So I'll explain that process later. So DALL-E is dependent on something called CLIP, which is uh, something called the Contrastive Language Pre uh, Image Pre-Learning, or you know, Language Image Pre-Imaging, or just whatever. You can read what it says right there. Um, this is basically a database of basically a, like I think millions or thousands of uh, images with captions. Um, hold on. So 
want to explain later. I mentioned something called the prior. This is something I don't quite understand because it seems as though Clip is doing what the prior should do, but apparently they're two separate things. Um, but basically what the initial state does is it will learn basically the associations between two. Okay, so you can see this graphic right here. So you have the image encoder, basically turns in, uh, takes every image and then converts it into a latent space, a bunch of different dimensions. I don't know how many. And then it has a text encoder that turns, um, oh, I think they're actually both the same. I think they're pretty much, I think they're the same amount of dimensions. I'm not entirely sure though, where you have like a text space and then image space. And then this will learn um, the associations between those two in a dimension, in a area that's twice the dimensions of either the image encoder or the text encoder. So this is oh, another thing about this. Learning. Oh, phase. go ahead. Oh, it, this is the learning phase, right? Uh, it's learning before, before any image is generated. This is okay. it learning how to interpret text. Okay. Um, so what this does is it doesn't try to predict options from images. It tries to learn the associations between them, and ideally, it should form this like tight uh, line right here, uh, where its predictive power is high. Or, gosh, there's a lot of this that I still don't understand. But um, yeah. OK, so it actually seems that what Clip does is it creates image and text encodings. But something else called the prior will find a ways to translate one to the other. And so um, yeah, it basically, like a. So do you both remember the paper attention is all you need, the one we did at the very beginning? I don't remember it, but it's been too long. I'm gonna explain this later. But basically, what you do is you don't do it all at once. You take you take part of the text, and then you run it through. Uh, like for if I'm converting from English to Spanish, you obviously notice that some Spanish words, some like the word, the words are flipped. Like sometimes when I'm saying like instead of a, what is it called again? Is, is it something, the noun verb? Uh. A, a arrangement or something. I know it's a little about grammar. But basically, some of the descriptions come before instead of after, or vice versa. Um, so you can't just translate from one word to the next uh, in the same order. And so what happens is you have to understand a lot of context. And so sometimes with transformers is that they will translate, they'll take an entire sentence and translate it into the first word. And then they'll feed that first word in, in, it, in along with the entire sentence to translate and it'll create the next word. And so it's sort of this recursive process where um, it does it bit by bit and it adds up and, and it creates all an entire new sentence. Anyway, something similar uh, happens here where I have the text. Um, you know, I'll go ahead right now. Sorry, I'm a bit scatterbrained. I'll, this will make more sense later. Okay, so this is process called, um, use a model called Glide, which uses something called reverse diffusion. So instead of, Addition, adding like random information to an image to make it more random and white, turn into white noise. This does the opposite where it introduces order into white noise to create, to, gen to eventually create a real image. And what happens here is that I would add, like if I gave it instructions, maybe like a sentence, it would like take the first word and use it to add um, information here and take the next word and then use it to add more information here. But that first be, turn, needs to be turned into um, uh, information about the image. So it uses the prior, which is the transformer, to take the first sentence and turn that into like an image token. And the next part of the sentence to turn into another image token. I think this is what it's called, the information you're gonna put into the white noise to make an image. And so over time, it will read the sentence and create a finished image at the end. So it's kind of similar to an autoencoder, but not exactly. Um, you're basically kind of, you know, how this, uh, do you have any questions so far? I know I'm a little, little over the place. I, there's a lot I still don't understand about this model. Yeah. I, I think I get the part where it learns. Then now if this part is, where this part in the process, is learning or predicting or. This is the part where it actually makes the image after the instructions. Because it okay. learned. It learned, it created an image encoding and a text encoding using Clip. 
didn't use the prior to map the two together. And the clip is a trans, or in the, in the prior is a transformer. And what it's using here is it's using the prior, which is the transformer, to turn image instructions at different steps along the process into a image token. Okay. Add it to the uh, image to give it more order. Okay, That's what I think is basically going on. Yeah. I see. I see. Okay. So it uses the transformer to turn a uh, turn words into image to image meaning. Um. So yeah. That's it so far. Yeah, there's definitely a new thing to learn, I would say. Yeah. Interesting to see how the process works. Yeah. Got another one more together. Right?